When a fighter is intercepting another aircraft, speed is critical. But a pilot doesn't want to end the intercept flying straight at the target. That's a good way to shoot right past and expose the jet's vulnerable tail to an enemy. The best plan is to end the intercept in a position of advantage. So how is that done? Keep watching to find out. When we talk about a position of advantage in air combat, we mean having a fighter behind the target in this rear quarter arc. In this position, a potential adversary has his weapons away from the fighter, while the fighter has his weapons and sensors on the target. So the goal of any intercept should be to end up like this. Most intercepts will start in something resembling this scenario, with both aircraft and each other's forward arcs. As we covered earlier in this series, a defensive counter-air combat air patrol will be stationed between a defended asset and potential threats. This DCA camp will only be committed to an intercept when an aircraft is moving towards the defended asset. After all, we don't care about threats flying away from the asset. So this naturally creates this head-to-head -head geometry which we call high aspect. When we say aspect, we talk about the angle measured from the tail of the target. So if the interceptor is directly in front of the target, then the aspect angle will be 180. Directly off to either side would be 90. And off the tail would be 0. Common way of showing aspect is a shorthand that looks like this. This is how you'll see it displayed on the radar scopes of more advanced fighters. The last digit has been removed and the side has been added in its place. So this would be interpreted as 140 degrees of aspect on the right side. An easy way to visualize this is to think of it as your position being on the right side of the target, or that the target will be moving to your right. One question I've heard about this is, why is the tail aspect used instead of the angle off the nose? For some people, it's easier to visualize the number from the nose than from the tail. Ultimately, the point of an intercept is to end up in the rear quarter of the target where aspect is easier to visualize. Using that aspect is less complicated than starting with the nose base aspect and then switching aspects halfway through an intercept. That could cause a lot of confusion. We want to keep this as easy as possible because there's a lot to concentrate on during an intercept. Aspect and range are the two indicators we'll be using to guide us on our intercept. There's a process known as the baseline intercept that we can follow to get us onto the tail of the target. Throughout this process, we'll be using range and aspect to let us know when it's time to move to the next step. A baseline intercept starts with the fighter on the collision antenna train angle. We went over how to get on this angle in the last video. Once we've got the radar blip stabilized, we'll be on a heading to intercept the target. But we don't want to run into the target. Our goal is to end up behind the target by maneuvering to its rear quarter in a process known as a stern conversion. If you watch this video, then you know that to make a good stern conversion, you need turning room. So the next step after getting onto collision antenna train angle is to build some turning room with an offset. You can do this by pointing the nose of your fighter behind the target. So if your target was moving right to left, and you had the target on the right side of the scope for an intercept course, then you'd turn right to get the nose behind it. This turn would place the target on the left side of the scope. Now your nose is pointed behind the target and you're building turning room. In a baseline intercept, you want to have this offset established by no later than 20 nautical miles. Why specifically 20 nautical miles? It's because a head-on intercept happens really fast. So you need time to take care of other tasks like sorting targets and setting up the jet for combat. This is also the distance where beyond visual range combat is most likely to happen. So you don't want to be messing around with offset once you're here. It's possible to start building offset earlier, but remember this stern conversion is something that's done by a DCA camp protecting an asset. Going too early runs the risk of taking your fighter outside the fighter's lane or away from the protected asset, so keep 20 nautical miles in mind for this phase of the baseline intercept. To figure out how much we need to offset, we're going to use AA. That's our aspect angle. In a newer fighter, the radar display will let us know what that AA is. But in our F5, we'll need to get this from an outside source, like a controller. In a future video, I'll go over how this can be done using a script I put together for DCS. With that script, you'll be able to see target aspect just like it would be displayed in a newer jet. When the target is at 18 AA, which is pointed straight at you, then the offset should place the target out here at the very edge of the scope. The edge of the scope is the most extreme angle we can turn from a target while keeping it in view. 
we do this because 180 degrees of aspect is as high as it goes. So we turn away from that aspect the most. As AA decreases, we don't need to build as much offset, so we'll pull the target in closer to the center of the radar scope. For a target at 12 AA, you would place it in the very middle of the scope. Remember that 12 AA is our goal. That's 120 degrees from the tail, or right around here. Any AA that's between 12 and 18 will need a proportional offset. So 15 would be right in the middle of this half of the scope, and 16 would be a little closer to the edge. Just remember 12 for the middle and 18 for the outer edge. If you get this part right, then what you'll see is the target's AA gradually decreasing to 12 as long as it maintains its heading. That's exactly what we want. We want to get that AA down to 12 for the next step of our baseline intercept. By adjusting our heading according to these guidelines, we're controlling that aspect. Now we've talked about aspects going from 12 to 18, but you might be wondering, what do I do if it goes under 12 AA? For that, you go on to Collision Antenna Train Angle like we discussed in the last video. That'll put your nose in front of the target. With enough speed, you'll start to pull around to the target's front, which means your AA will increase. If all this sounds complicated, just remember the following. Lead Pursuit will increase the aspect. Going the other way, into lag will decrease it. So make adjustments as you close in on the target to get it to 12. We're aiming for 12 AA here because once we have this aspect at around 6 to 8 miles, we're in a good position to begin the stern conversion. Just remember that 12 AA and 6 to 8 miles is the gate into the next phase. Now there are a couple things we want to watch for as we close in to this 6 to 8 mile stage. Aspect should be gradually dropping, but if it starts to increase, it's possible that the target has turned to engage you. Conversely, a rapid decrease in AA means that the target is turning away from you. But if it starts increasing without the target changing heading, it means your offset is wrong, and you should readjust it according to our guidelines. If everything is done correctly, you should end up here at 12 AA with 6 to 8 miles to the target. The next step of the baseline intercept is simple. Go pure pursuit. Just keep your nose on the target. That's it. With this geometry, you'll naturally slide to the rear of the target and fall into an offensive position. This part of the intercept is going to happen quickly. So we want to do everything possible to free up your attention for the stern conversion. With aspect at 12 and range between 6 and 8 miles, you no longer need to watch any indicators and can focus on getting a tally on the target. You'll be in visual range at this point and can use your radar to guide your eyes to a tally. Remember that a tally is worth a thousand radar contacts. So you'll want to switch from watching your instruments to getting your own eyes on the target as soon as possible. Most fighter radar scopes will have an indicator showing where the antenna is pointed. Our F5 does this by switching to a C-scope mode when the radar is locked onto a target. In a C-scope, the azimuth is displayed just like in a B-scope. But vertically, we see elevation shown. So in this case, you can see that the antenna is pointed up 10 degrees since the cross lines up with the number 10 here. Along the bottom, we have another set of lines showing the azimuth of the antenna, which is also in 10 degree increments. Since the radar blip is on this line above the number 10, we know the antenna train angle is left of the center line by 10 degrees. Once you know the azimuth and elevation, you can line up those with visual references inside the cockpit. These references are known as canopy codes. They look like this. This downward turning part of the glare shield is 10 degrees off the aircraft's center line. The left edge of the airspeed indicator is 20 degrees, and the very end of the glare shield is 30 degrees. They're mirrored on the right side as well. Just keep in mind the 20 degree line here doesn't perfectly align with the instruments. Now let's look at the vertical canopy codes. This line below the gun sight is 10 degrees down, and where the glare shield edge looks like it meets the edge of the canopy glass is down 20. Just above and below the canopy bow is where you'll find 20 and 10 up. Zero is where the pipper sits when the depression is set to zero. Using these visual references will help you spot what would otherwise be an easy to miss speck in the distance. Just to give you an example, here is a contact moving towards 10 down and 20 right. That's right around here on our canopy. If we keep watching that spot, we should see the target. And there it is. Using these visual references, you should be able to get a tally and then stay focused for the final stern conversion. Let's do a quick recap of the steps involved for a baseline intercept. 
You start with the collision antenna train angle, which means putting the nose of your fighter in front of the target. So in the case of a target flying right to left, you would put the center of the radar scope to the left of the target. Next we want to start building an offset by 20 miles. This means putting the nose of the fighter behind the target. For our right to left moving target, we would want to put the center of the scope on the right side of the target. Now our goal is to set 12 aspect angle and hold that until 6 to 8 miles of range. We can adjust AA by pushing the target to the edge of the scope to decrease aspect angle. Going to collision antenna train angle will increase aspect. The next step is pure pursuit, which means putting the nose and the center of the radar scope right on the target. Your cue to go to pure pursuit is 12 AA and 6 to 8 miles of range. During this final turn, you should be able to visually spot the target, which we call gaining a tally. This pure pursuit turn should bring you around behind the target where your goal is to end up in trail at 1 to 2 miles. From here, you have a great vantage point to determine what you should do with the target of your intercept. If it's a civilian plane that's accidentally strayed into your airspace, then you can just ease alongside and give the pilot instructions to leave the area. Or if you can confirm the target is a hostile aircraft, you're now in the ideal position for a stern heat seeker shot. The baseline intercept not only works for intercepting a potential attacker, but it's also what you would use to meet up with a tanker for aerial refueling. And it works on any fighter that has a B-scope display regardless of when it was made. So it's an important skill to master for any fighter pilot. But there are a couple scenarios we need to discuss a little more. Like what to do if there are multiple targets, or what a wingman should do. Those topics will be covered in a future video. But there's also a scenario where the target turns towards our jet for a head-on engagement. In this case, you want to execute a lead turn, which I explained in this video. I hope you found this useful, and as always, thanks for watching.